Hi folks, my name is Sirish Raghuram. I'm the co-founder and CEO at Platform9. And um, I know we had a, a very spirited discussion, fantastic feedback. I'd like to take a few minutes to give you, just recap some of the points we discussed and give you some visibility to how it works under the hood. And um, I know we're a little short on time, but we'll go quickly. So this was already touched upon. The control plane, Platform9's controller, is an OpenStack installation that's production ready and tuned and ready to go and we do all of the configuration and, and, and management of that. It only receives outbound uh, data, metadata, no data, over encrypted HTTPS. You don't need to make any changes to your firewall rules. It just works. We never call into your environment. This is dedicated per customer account, so there's nothing shared between two customer accounts. And access, going back to some of the security comments, uh, we understand the importance of security. This is cloud infrastructure you're dealing with. Uh, we understand that. So access can be restricted to trusted networks. And there are other, other features that we have planned that will further tighten the security profile. So our goal has been to deliver the simplest product experience that we could while balancing the security concerns. And in some ways, for example, when Heartbleed happened, our servers, our services were patched with the fix for Heartbleed within hours. If you had it on premise, it may have taken you longer to actually have that fixed in house. So, in some ways, it's actually better. We can actually be compliant and conformant. So, it's not necessarily the case that a SaaS service is automatically insecure. There's multi factor authentication, two factor authentication. So, you can require that all logins, going back to some of the questions that were asked, is either through trusted keys or if it's users logging in through the UI. Uh, you may require two-factor authentication. Can I ask a question on that Heartbleed comment? Yes. How would this have mitigated if I was running an organization with, you know, with Platform 9 with 5,000 servers? How would this have eased uh, patching the Heartbleed? On the physical servers themselves? Yes. So I think this was a question that came up in the earlier session as well. We currently do not patch, help manage the, the general OS patching problem. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a large problem. We had to pick our battles, pick and choose. Conceptually, could we do it? Yes, we could do it. Uh, do we want to do it, or would we rather I partner? Understand that, but I don't, then I don't understand the statement that it what I meant is mitigated the, the heartbeat problem within minutes as opposed to days, but I don't understand. The heartbeat problem yeah. as it applied to your control plane. So if you had management okay. software. OK, gotcha. Yeah. OK. I should have clarified. No, that, that, that's OK. I, just, I, I wanted to understand, which I wanted to make sure. Except for the only slight difference that Platform 9 is on the dirty internet, while if you had OpenStack internally, it may not be as open to the rest of the world. You might get the dirty internal, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, no, I think, yeah, we have ways to access networks, and we can talk about that offline as well. We spoke about ease of use. Um, there is no complex installation. The one thing that you install is that initial agent. It's a small bootstrap agent, primarily serving to ha help enable trust, build trust between your servers and your control plane. That's what uh, that enables. You never spend any time installing, upgrading, configuring, backing up, monitoring your management system. Sorry. I have no idea what that is. But it's updating Platform 9. <laughs> <laughs> that was a feature. Just making sure you guys are aware. Uh, automation. What we bring about is automation. So if you think about ease of use, this is about bringing better agility, ease of use for your developers, and also letting your IT staff scale more because they have help in terms of managing the resources more efficiently. We have uh, a fluid UI that's written in AngularJS and HTML5, and also all of the REST APIs, OpenStack 100% compatible REST APIs. There is an extension mechanism within OpenStack, which is pretty elegant. So all of Platform 9's modifications happen, are exposed through an extension, which is Platform 9 specific. But the core OpenStack APIs are 100% compatible. I want to talk about environment discovery. Uh, and I think there was a question about VMware integrated OpenStack. And our understanding is that no other OpenStack system, including VMware integrated OpenStack today, uh, discovers existing environments or lets you use other management systems once you have an environment that's managed with OpenStack. So what that means is, my understanding is, if you use VMware integrated OpenStack, you cannot use vCenter to perform certain operations. Like you cannot vMotion a VM out of cluster. You cannot storage vMotion a, a VM outside a data store cluster and so forth. So operationally, that's restricting. Right? And we wanted an experience where you have complete freedom of choice. So the way that works is when you have an environment uh, with servers and resources and VMs that are running on it, 
and you have that being managed by Platform 9, Platform 9 works off of metadata updates that it receives from your environment, and it constantly receives updates. By constantly, I mean every so often, it receives updates so that it's coherent. So whenever something changes on your environment, so if a VM vMotioned out of its cluster into a different one, there is an update that's sent to Platform 9 from the agent software that you have in your environment. Uh, in the VMware environment case, that would be the vSphere appliance. And that's how Platform 9 knows that that has changed, and it updates its records internally appropriately. So the implication is that you can use the systems of your choice. You can use Platform 9 for what you want, and you can use the underlying layer directly when you want to. You can span geographies. We have customers who are already managing environments that are across continents. You can also leverage multiple virtualization platforms. In the vSphere demo, we touched upon how uh, when you use it side by side with KVM versus vSphere or with other management virtualization technologies, be it Hyper-V or Docker, from a user experience point of view, you, your users see their applications and their images and the quotas and the profiles or the flavors that they have access to, and they may not really care what the underlying technology is. Right? It just works. It's a common, consistent plane. So you then have the freedom to decouple your cloud from your virtualization deployments and make the choices that work best for you and ensure that you don't have shadow setups because someone somewhere, you acquired a company that had a big KVM deployment and now you can no longer manage it. Or you have a, a developer group that's nuts about Docker and they're like, to hell with virtualization, it's Docker and you, can't, you can no longer manage it, right? So production readiness. Um, there's a lot more to it than what I'm covering here, but Platform 9 is a hardened, battle-tested version of OpenStack. We've had a cumulative 30 minutes of downtime on one of our nodes, unplanned downtime, on one of our nodes over a seven-month beta. 30 minutes on one of our nodes over a seven-month beta. Okay? And the, the rest of it, it just stayed up. Right? And that's because we monitor, we tune it. OpenStack is a collection of distributed services that needs a lot of tuning. It's a tuned, ready-to-go configuration that we know. It's hardened for availability. It's uh, monitored constantly. And it's also, it's got a stateless application layer working against a replicated SQL backend. So it can scale, we, and we monitor the scale limits constantly. The control plane is backed up every night. Backups are retained for 30 days. Uh, we've never had to restore from a backup, but we practice it. So I've got a question. Real quick. Yes. <clears throat> if, I, if I deploy this on, <clears throat> say I deploy this in a, hyper, or a, a VMware deployment, and I want to migrate that to, say, KVM or, Lord forbid, Hyper-V or something like that. Um, <laughs> Ooh. How, no, nothing, me I'm out. not sensing anything over here. But, <laughs> but I mean, how, how did, I assume you would handle that through some sort of migration. So or is that? We enable a common, consistent workflow uh, that works regardless. We don't have any migration tools for you. Okay, so I can't change. So if my developers deploy a bunch of VMs and they're using it, today, and now all of a sudden budget time or whatever, I need to deploy KVM, and I want to be able to move those developers, you know, containers, whatever I want to move over to this new environment. They have to redeploy. Currently. They do have to redeploy. Okay. Uh, you do have to deal with an out-of-band migration process, but uh, because of our discovery mechanism, we will discover sure. all of those changes as you make okay. those changes. But I mean, is that something you're looking at as being able to migrate that to... We, from one platform we to think the other. that the community will come in and there'll yeah. be there'll be alternatives out there. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. There are already commercial tools to do yeah, that, right? I think so you could, yeah, yeah, yeah. I but, mean yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. We spoke about updates. So the way it works is small frequent updates. Uh, that's what makes helps make it non disruptive to your environment. It also helps us release quickly. So the moment we see an issue we have the ability to get on it very, very quickly. Uh, we, we have the ability to release a, if you have a critical issue, we guarantee a fix to our customers within 24 hours. And we have a definition of what a critical issue is. And so that's important, I think. It's non-disruptive. The control plane updates first. You get a note saying that your control plane is being updated. It's planned for this time. You can reschedule it if you want. What happens is that your management node goes offline for a little while, but your system stays working all the time. After the control plane updates, if needed, the data plane software, what's running in your environment, may update. It's less frequent than the control plane update, and uh, it's something that's rolled out across all of your infrastructure. And we never release an update. Uh, we may do it for a critical update, but even that, we've only released updates after releasing it to Platform 9's internal infrastructure. 
So we use our own product first before we ship it to our customers. Cascading failure, I'm just kidding. Yes. <laughs> but, but. <laughs> uh, vSphere support, so I have, we've been asked the question sometimes, why not already release the vSphere demo that you saw? We think there's a number of issues with it. It's not quite at the level where we think it should be ready for release, and that's why it's, in, it's not yet available. Uh, we think it's important to support more than one cluster per vCenter. So the current OpenStack driver has that limit, and the data store is also somewhat limited. Uh, environment discovery, uh, which means that you should be able to get uh, import seamlessly the templates and images and the networks and the storage that you already have. Also, you should be free to use all of vCenter's APIs. Right? Uh, that's something that we think is very important. Leveraging vCenter customization. vCenter has a very sophisticated customization mechanism that we think we should be leveraging. And the template library that you already have, we think that OpenStack should just be reflecting that as opposed to making conversions or copies, redundant copies of all of those templates in a format that OpenStack understands. Those, those are a few examples, multiple vCenter installations. Those are a few examples of the kinds of enhancements that we think are necessary before you can consider this ready for a VMware customer to use. So are they enhancements then that you guys are actively looking at, or are you waiting for VMware or OpenStack? To We're working on all of these right now. Driver. Okay. And uh, I think we would like to funnel it back into the community, uh, but this challenge is there in terms of it takes a lot of effort to mm -hmm. do that. I know you talked about tags earlier for, for OpenStack, but what about the vCenter tags? Do they come in as well, or do I need to go back in and retag everything? Tags in vCenter, that's uh, not something we import right now. Okay. So I think that's a great point. I think we'll make a note of it. Um, do you already have a lot of tags? So You can use for flavors and this. I, I try to use tags as much as possible. Yes. Uh, I think tags are very important, especially going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't use them today, but I think as things start to progress, mm -hmm. they'll realize how important yeah. they've become. So I was just curious. Especially no, I think it should be a part of that discovery. So I think it's uh, metadata that we should be discovering. So great point. We use the notes. notes. Yes. The annotations. The annotations. Yeah. Annotations, yeah. So, there, there are two different things, right? Because some people use the annotations just like, hey, this is my vCenter, blah, 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 right? right? Well, this but, is the owner of this is. But the tags can actually differentiate between, you know, hey, this is, I'm using this in production, but this is also for my financial group, right? And yeah, yeah. so you can, you can yeah. use that for a lot of metadata. Great so. feedback. And we'll make notes on both of those. So the net result is that it's much simpler for a VMware customer to get on board with what, what they have, and they can continue to use all of the operations and APIs and any existing automation or scripts that you have when you use Platform 9 with your environment. All we do is we layer on top and we add infrastructure pooling, self-service, and placement automation. Containers, talk briefly about it. We think it'll be, they'll be increasingly common. They're a real alternative. They, certain applications, you can use them almost like you could use virtual machines. Some other places, you may want to prefer the stability and the resource guarantees and the security isolation that you get with virtualization. Uh, we think that eventually, you should be free to use the technologies of choice. So we think the private cloud should support both VMs and containers and let organizations choose what they want to run where. Here's uh, a pictorial uh, diagram of how conceptually all of this can work together. I think we've covered the architecture a little before, so I'll scoot past this. And you know, in talking about the differentiators, uh, compared to other alternatives for OpenStack, we think that the management experience is a lot simpler. Uh, the SLAs for predictable, the changes and updates is a lot better. Uh, you get a single pane. Uh, you get support for multiple platforms. And we don't support as many services. The one thing I will mention is that you know, other OpenStack vendors will support a much broader range of services, including Salometer uh, and other services. But our philosophy is make a core that works really, really well, and then add more features after you have a core that works really, really well. So. That's the path we're taking. We don't have any OS or HCL uh, restrictions. So we fundamentally don't want to be tied to any operating system or any virtualization technology. We want this to be something that customers can choose for themselves. So in summary, I'd say thank you very much for having us here. Uh, we've shared our approach to private clouds and why private clouds matter. Uh, we believe that this is the simplest path to a private cloud and um, private clouds for, so at scale for any organization. And customers can just sign up for a free trial or sign up for a free tier at platform9.com.